to be with the mighty Sacramento Church. Come on, bro. No, if you're busy for the very first time, it's actually my first time visiting the Sacramento Church. Welcome, bro. But if you're busy for the first time, I want to thank you, uh, thank you all for being here. This is kind of a a mini reunion for us, yes, uh, my wife and we got to plant the Denver that. church, and we have Denver right yeah. here, um, and we have Sydney and Adrian, and then uh, I saw Brooke Helm somewhere, I think. Yeah. 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 She is, as well as the Vias is where the Eugene church Come on! Woo. Woo. So it's very exciting. And I also, uh, I, as Jacob said, I want to thank my parents for being here today. Oh, my <laughs> How far you drove to get here today, but they drove all the way from Kaiju of Oregon just to come to church today. No! Oh, okay. I, 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 I said, hey, I'm, gonna pre- I'm preaching today. And I'm like, okay, we're going to come. Okay, that's awesome. We'll get I had to bribe them a little bit with a trip to Tahoe, too. Let go. Let go. It's generally. Definitely an honor. It's definitely Come exciting on, uh, to be here. George, uh, Jacob Coyne does such a great job with the yeah, church. Absolutely. Uh, Julie and I are we're, we're so proud of them yeah. uh, and the job that they have done. Uh, you know, we uh, we got to go way back. Yeah, to so 2004. Ooh, that's back when. Uh, you know, Julie and I moved from the Bay Area, interestingly, back to Eugene. Uh, we saw Courtney get baptized. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, and, uh, yeah, we, we saw we saw Jacob. You know, he he I might share some stories, but my gift to him is I'm not going to share. I'm not going to share about the, the times. Yes, we didn't mention them, but I'm not going to share about the times he just come and have the hoodie on, or oh, yeah. flop down in the seat, you know, and just not talk. And, yeah. and, and we'll share about those moments. <laughs> Jacob has truly come a long way. <laughs> I'll just say that. Come on, bro. But it's an honor to be able to speak with you guys this morning. And uh, I really want to lift up the mighty Sacramento Church. Come on, bro. And uh, you know, I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Come on, bro. A happy holidays. Hopefully you've got all of your shopping done. Maybe some of the guys still need to rush out of here and hit the mall. You know, if you go to the mall... On Christmas Eve, it's full of guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the women are done, but the guys are like, I got to get that last one. Yeah. 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 Uh, hopefully, you know, you know, yeah, I put best of my sin there, but uh, hopefully <laughs> you're enjoying the uh, the time off. Come on, bro. It's just something about the holidays. Just you have more time off. There's there's a lot more downtime. Yep. Um, and, you know, the, the kids are out of school and everyone's just hanging out and but, you know, it's interesting, you know, sometimes with the holidays, even with all of that, we don't really connect. Mm-hmm. Come, on, bro. come on, bro. And this morning, I really have two goals for us. Wow, come on. Two things I want to put on our hearts as we go into the holidays, as we head into Christmas, and, and a word is connection. But the two things that I really want to put on our hearts is, one, connecting with God, come being on. in the in the presence of God, and two, connecting with people. That's what it's all about, loving God and loving people. And so the title of the lesson that I have for you today, which was given to me by my wife, <laughs> Christmas right. Presents. Oh. It's not about the, the gifts under the tree. It's about God's presence being with us. Okay. It's, about, it's about our presence. It's really on, being bro. there with those that we love. Amen? I like it. I like it. Because there's just something about the holidays. As I said, everything shuts down. The kids are home. And, and if we have these great opportunities to connect with each other. Yeah. We have these, these great moments where we can, but we don't always connect. Come on, bro. We don't always connect with God. We don't always connect with people. Sometimes on, we pull our hearts back and we're... Yeah. And we're, and we're more into what's going on on the TV. Or we're more into oh, having our face in the doing. Facebook with, with, and not being with each other. Not <laughs> Come on, bro. Each other. Come on, bro. And we can numb out. So we're going to talk about on, Christmas presents. We've got to remember what it's all about. Yeah. 
And I appreciate Jacob leading off with Isaiah 9 this morning. I'll just read it again. Isaiah 9, verse 6. It says, For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Isaiah 7 Verse 14 says, The Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And we will call him Emmanuel. Yeah. Which means, if you look in the footnotes, God is with us. Yeah. You know, it's such an amazing thing that God wants to be with us. Come on, bro. God does, is not a distant God where it's just uh, you know, somebody that we think about. Like the old man in the sky. I don't know who God is to you. But God wants to connect with us. Yeah. And we definitely want his presence with us. And right. We don't always understand how to have a relationship with God. We've got to fight for our relationship with God. Right. right. You know, I heard a story once that really put into perspective why God had to come down as Jesus and be with us. Come on, bro. Emmanuel, God is with us. Why does that have to happen? Because if you look at throughout the Old Testament, before Jesus... God's people were always going astray. They had always run. They were afraid of God, but they didn't quite know how to connect with God. So he sends his son, Jesus. Yeah. And the story that I heard that really kind of puts it into perspective is the story of a, of a man. I don't know if the story is true or not, but I like the story. I just call it the, the goose or the geese story. And the story is, is of a man who is a uh, uh, proclaimed atheist. But his wife was a believer, and she one day took all the kids to church, and he said, I don't want to go. I don't believe in that nonsense story. I'm going to stay here at the house. And, and he did. And it was a farmhouse, and pretty soon there was a blizzard. The snow came in, and then he, he heard something banging against the side of the house. And he got up to inspect and to see what was going on, and he noticed a flock of wild Canadian geese had lost their way. They'd gone astray. They had lost their way, and they were bumping in, banging in the house, trying to figure out where to go in the storm. And so he goes out there, and he wants to help them, you know, be safe. And so he opens up the doors to his barn where it was warm, and his animals were, and he tries to shoo them into the barn where they would be safe. They would be okay, but they just wouldn't go. They would run from him. And he's like, man, why won't they listen to me? Why won't they follow me? Huh. And so then he, he thinks, okay, I'll just get smart here. I'll go get some food. And he gets some bread. And he makes a little trail. He tries to lead them that way into the barn. But they, they won't, I mean, they will not follow. Huh. Even the food won't help them. Even though knowing it's going to be better for them, they will not follow. They will not go. And he's like, okay, what the heck? What do I do? And so, so then he has this idea. Okay, I'm going to go get my geese, my farm geese, and I'll bring them out. So he goes and he grabs a couple of them. And he brings them to the geese, and he sets them before them. And his geese, who are used to the warmth of the barn, they quickly just fly right into the barn. The other geese see it, and they follow that goose, those geese, right into the barn wow. to their safety. Wow. And, he, and the story of the story goes, in that moment, he understood why Jesus had to come. He had to why he came. Come on. Because we had such a hard time understanding and following God that he sends his son so that we have this flesh and blood an example Come on, bro. to follow. Come on, bro. God is with us. Because just like those geese, we all go astray. Yeah. We all run from God. Maybe I'm the only one. I don't know. Come on, bro. <laughs> but in my life, I'm not talking about just many years ago before I became a Christian, but even now, there's times where I'm afraid, where I run from God. There's different things in my life. I get distracted, and i got to fight to connect with God. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. We have to accept the greatest gift that's ever been given to us. Mm. And that's Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. Come on, bro. The presence of God with us. You know, this morning I want you to ask yourself, is God really with you? Mm. Come on, bro. Is God with you? Do you see God moving in your life? Is he guiding your life? Not in a religious, I said a prayer once. Come on, mm. bro. I had this moment. I had this emotional experience many years ago. Wow. No, do you really see God each and every day moving in your life, oh, speaking to you through his word, Come where on, each bro. and every day you're getting up, you're walking with your friend, your God, you're connecting, striving to connect with God, fighting for your relationship with him. Come on, bro. Come when on, you bro. don't see him moving in your life, you dig deeper into the scriptures, you dig deeper into your prayer life. Is that 
your life in your connection with God. Come on, bro. That's great. You gotta fight for it. You gotta fight for your relationship with God. You know, for me, I I, I want a relationship with God. I don't want to be religious. Yeah. Come on, bro. When I grew up, I I didn't like just going to church for the sake of going to church. I didn't like church all that much. (laughs) For me, it's about connecting with God. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Come on. It's it's, it's a life. You know, when I get done, I, I. at the end of my life, I want to hear God say, well done, good and faithful. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Not, I never knew you. Yeah. Wow. Come on, bro. Yeah. Come on, bro. Turn to Exodus 33. Come on, bro. This is great, 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 great. great. I only have two points. God's presence, number one. My second point, your presence. Love it. Come on. That's awesome. So we're going to talk about, my longest point is really the first one, God's presence. Everything comes out of that. Yeah. Right? It's so important that God's really with us and that we're fighting for our relationship with God, that we're walking with God. And I love this passage in Exodus 33. Come on, Jeremiah. Verse 11. It says, The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Moses said to the Lord, You've been telling me, Lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and have found favor with me, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways, so I may know you, and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. Come on. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? And what else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you've asked because I am pleased with you. And I know you by name. Then Moses said, now show me your glory. Yeah. Woo. Love it. Wow. Come on. I had, set, I had to say it with a little Baptist tent to it. Either. Yeah. No, but you know, Moses here is leading God's people after the Exodus. And God is forming his people into a nation. It says that Moses would speak to God face to face as one speaks with a friend. Right. That's everything right there. Mm. Yeah. If you want to be a good leader, if you want to be a good disciple, if you just want to be a good anything, you've got to have a real friendship mm, with God. Yeah. Come on. Right. Since he would speak to him as one speaks to a friend. You know, think about your own life. Who do you call a friend to you? What, 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 who constitutes as a friend to you? Would you consider someone a friend that never talked to you? Oops. Would you consider somebody a friend that... At, when you r- would write letters to, or someone that you sent emails to, they never responded. They never. They didn't really care. They never read them. Woo! Come on, bro. Would you consider someone a friend that the only time they contacted you was when they were in trouble? Yeah. <laughs> or they needed something. Or they needed something from you. <laughs> no, that would not be your friend. You send them letters and emails. They'd never read them. Right? You reach out, they never they never get back to you. The only time they call you is when they need something. You would say, No way, you're not my friend. But this is how many of us treat God. That's right. He's really written the most beautiful letter we could ever have, the word of God. And some of us never even open it. Yeah. We never read his love letter to us. The only time we pray is when we need something. God is like a, a lucky charm, a rabbit's foot, a genie in the bottle. We, right. we pull it out when we want to rub it, and we want to ask for something from God. Come on, bro. Yeah, bro. That's not a friendship. Mm. Not. A friendship is going to God with all of your heart. Right. Every, each and every day, you're walking with God. Come on, Moses bro. spoke to God face to face as one speaks with a friend. Come on, bro. Come on. Come on. He goes on, he says, Moses says, teach me. I want to know you. I want to know you. I mean, there's so much in those words. How much do you really want to know God? You know how you can tell? How much do you read this? 
The Bible of John 1 says the Word was God. The yep. Word was with God. The Word was God. Like, yeah. if you want, God right. reveals Himself to us through the Scriptures. Right. 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 When we pray, we're doing all the talking. Right. But when you read the Word of God, God is speaking to you. This is where He reveals Himself to us, to you, through His Scriptures. And you know, if you really want to know God, by how much you read the Scriptures. Yeah. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. If you read every once in a while, if you read once a year, that's, that's how much you really want to know God. Come, Come on, on. How much do you really want to know God? That's a great question. Moses wanted to know if God was really going to go with them. Mm. If he's going to be present. He, said, he, he went as far as to say, God, if you're not going to go with us, then, then I don't even, we don't even want to go. Amen. If you're not with us, how are people going to know we're different? How are people going to know we're different than the world? How are people wow. going to know that we're set apart as disciples unless God makes it known? Unless God is really with each and yep. every one of them. Come on. Yeah. You know, to fully understand how big a deal this is, that God is with us and God's presence, and how amazing it is as disciples, we get the opportunity to walk with God. Right. Yeah. We, get, we get the opportunity to worship a God who comes near to us when we go near to Him, James 4, 8. Come on, bro. That we get to enter the inner sanctuary. We get to pray and have this personal, one-on-one relationship with God. Wow. You're only talking to the creator of the universe. Yeah. <laughs> and we take it for granted. I do. I take it for granted sometimes. I'm out praying and I'm getting distracted and I'm like, sometimes I just have to like focus and realize I'm praying to God. Right. Yeah. The same God Moses prayed to. The yeah. same God that Abraham prayed to. The same God David cried out to. Yeah. I am I'm crying out to that God. I need to take it so much more seriously. Come on, come on, come on, come on. To help us understand, come on. turn to Leviticus 16. Okay. Okay. It's important that you understand what it really means and how holy and how special it is to come into the presence yep. of God. Come on, bro. Come on, brother. Leviticus 16. God's presence. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Wait. This is the meaning of the season. This is why we do what we do. Come on. In verse 1, the Lord spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, who died when they approached the Lord. Now, it's very interesting. It says they approached God and they died. Why would this happen? Now, go to chapter 10 where we look at this. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. But keep your finger in Leviticus 16 because we're going to go back. In chapter 10, in verse 1, it says, Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, Abihu, <laughs> took their censers, put fire in them, and added incense, and they offered unauthorized fire before the Lord, contrary to his command. So fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. Moses then said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke of when he said, among those who approach me, I will show myself holy. In the sight of all the people, I will be honored. Aaron remained silent. Now go back to chapter 16. So here you have Aaron's two sons, Nadab and Abihu. And what was going on is they tried to approach God, but God didn't say that they could. This is God in the Old Testament. They tried to approach God, go into the inner sanctuary where really once a year the high priest could enter into the sanctuary and come into the presence of God. They tried to take it upon themselves without a personal invite and go approach and spend that that special time that was reserved for the high priest with God, and they got smoked, literally. Wow. wow. In chapter 2, or verse 2 of 16, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Tell your brother Aaron that he is not to come whenever he chooses <laughs> into the most holy place behind the curtain in front of the atonement cover on the ark, or else he will die. For I will appear in the cloud over the atonement cover. Wow. I mean, I read this to give us a sense of how holy God is. You have Nadab and Abihu, who just tried to approach God without God without the invite. <laughs> Take it upon themselves and go into the inner sanctuary. They weren't the high priest, and they got smoked. They died. Mm, wow. God's like, no, this is going to be a holy thing. Yeah. 
And once a year, the high priest, Aaron, could enter in the sanctuary. They would literally tie a rope around their leg because if they weren't pure and they died in the room, no one could go in and get them. And they had to pull them out by a rope. That's how serious it was to, to be in the presence of God. Come on, bro. Now go to Hebrews chapter 10. Come on, bro. Good stuff, bro. Teach us. Jesus came and he paved the way as the final high priest. Yep, yep. Jesus came, he died for us, he paved the way into the inner sanctuary so that we now can have this personal relationship with God. And we can go to him as much as we want, anytime we want, in the yeah. inner sanctuary. So, right. That's the whole meaning of what the moment Jesus dies on the cross, the curtain of the temple is torn in two. Symbolizing now that anyone, we are all priests of the kingdom of God, that anyone can approach God with Right. Yeah. In Hebrews 10, verse 19. That's great, bro. Come on. It says, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open up for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that brings and a full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, Amen. and having our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Right. Turn to Hebrews chapter 4. This is great, Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. The blood of Jesus paved the way, opens up the way for us to have this amazing and intimate relationship with God. In Hebrews 4, verse 15, it says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who was tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Come on, bro. This is awesome. Yeah. I'm sure, back, you go back to Nadab and Abihu, when this happened, everybody was afraid. If someone says, hey, you want to go spend time with God? Nope. <laughs> Not happening. Not happening. You see what happened to Nadab? They tried that and they got smoked. I am no. And they were afraid. There's this fear. Listen, yeah. I, I, I don't believe that's not what God wants. God right. wants a relationship with us. So he sends Jesus who pays the way so that it says that we can approach God's throne. I mean, God would come down into the sanctuary. But now he says, you can come into my, the, my very chamber of the king. Wow. And you can approach my throne. You can run to the throne of God. Yeah. With confidence. Come on. Come on, bro. Come on. With confidence. Great, great bro. Awesome. To help you in your time of need. Any time, any, any time that you want. Yeah. Yeah. As much as you want. Mm. You can approach the throne of grace. The throne right. of grace. Not the throne of fear. Mm. The throne of punishment. I mean, I don't know about you, but sometimes... I run from God because of, uh, out of fear or out of guilt. Right. Yeah. I, I don't want. I don't want. I, I, I don't want to pray because I have a guilty conscience, or I, I'm afraid that maybe He doesn't really want to listen to me. He wants to listen to everybody else, but not me. Yeah. I'm kind of a mess up. I'm kind of a screw up. I was. I had a bad week. I, had a bad, I don't. Those kinds of things go through my head. I don't know about you. Yeah. God's like, no, 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 no. That's why Jesus died. Yeah. To yeah. cleanse you of a guilty conscience, right. so that you can approach. The throne of grace. Yeah. Come on, bro. With confidence. God wants us to come to him yeah. over and over and over again. You know, as a father, I really get this. Yeah. I don't want my two sons afraid to talk to dad. Right. Um, fearful where they never talk to me. They're afraid to bring something up. They're afraid to come hang with dad. I want them to come to me and my daughter to come to me anytime they want. Right. Come on, bro. With anything and everything. Right. Mm. This is God. In his relationship with us. Turn to Matthew chapter 10. Come on, bro. bro. That's how special it is. And you've got to cherish it. That's how amazing it is that you get to approach God. That you get to be in his presence. 
So yeah, hopefully yeah. just that will change your prayer life over the next Come few days. Come on, bro. It'll change your prayer life forever. Come yeah. On. And that you think about it differently, that you get to have this personal relationship. Right. Come on, bro. In Matthew chapter 10, sometimes we get distracted in our relationship with God. So I want to read this scripture. Sometimes we, we replace what's most important with the urgent. Mm. What do I mean by that? Sometimes we stress out, we get worried, we're anxious, especially in the holiday. I don't know what it is. Mm. Trying to bake the turkey, the ham, and clean up, get the gifts, all this stuff. And we're freaking out and we're worried and we're anxious, we're distracted by many things. Right. And we don't spend time with God. Mm. Mm. Come on, bro. And so we substitute the urgent. In the immediate for what's most important. Let's read in verse 38. Now we Come on, Come on bro. So that Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted mm-hmm. by all the preparations that just had to be made. Yep. Come on. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Oh, come on, Martha. Please tell her to help me. Tell her. And you got to love Jesus. Yeah. Martha. 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 <laughs> You're worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed. Or need only one. Mary has chosen what is better. Yeah. Come on. And it will not be taken from her. Right. Wow. Right. Here we find Jesus at the home of Mary and Martha. Mm. What if Jesus came to your home? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. I mean, how would you be? The knock at the door, Jesus is standing there. Can I hang with you for Christmas? Yeah. And he comes on in, and you see two very different hearts. Mary sat at Jesus' feet in the presence of God himself. Just listening, hanging on every word. I don't know what kinds of questions that she asked the Messiah. But she just was content being in the presence of God. But Martha, the Bible says, just worried and distracted about everything. So so instead of just enjoying being in the presence of God, she was stressed (laughs) by all that had to be done. Come on, bro. So how is your holidays going to go? Are you going to be distracted and worried and upset and angry by all the things that you just have to do? Or you didn't enjoy just being in the presence of God. Come on, bro. Just sitting at Jesus' feet. Turn to John chapter 14. Come on, bro. Don't let this happen to you over the holidays. Okay, bro. Yeah. Now, at the same time, sir, I know how some of us are. Some of us, you know, mom will be like, hey, can you help me with the dishes? I got to go pray. Oh. 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 Can, can you clean up around the house? Oh, go for a little walk. I got this scripture. That's not what this scripture is talking about. Get up early, spend time with God, then serve your family. Be a little side note there. I know how some of the people think. I say that from personal experience. (laughs) John chapter 14. So, (laughs) Jesus, he leaves, but he doesn't leave us hanging. He sends us his Holy Spirit Mm. so that we can be in his presence all the time. John 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commands. Come on, bro. God's love language. Obedience. Obedience. Wow. We have books on five love languages. Yeah. Quality time. Yeah. Gifts. Some of you really like Christmas. You really feel lunch. Right? Words of encouragement. That's another one, right? Acts of service, right? Yeah. Come on. Come on. God's love language, he's got one. Yeah, right. Obey my commands. Right. Come on. It's not a feeling. I mean, it is. there is feelings involved with it, but some of us think we love God. We live any way that we want, but we think we love God because we feel like we love God. I was like, I appreciate you have feelings, but obey my command. That's my love language. Get in the book. Do what it says. Come on, bro. If you love me, then keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he'll give you another counselor. To be with you forever. Remember, he's a wonderful counselor. Yep. Isaiah 9. Right. 
He will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be and will be inside of you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. Okay. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Mm. You know, before Jesus leaves the disciples, he promises to send them the Holy Spirit, the Counselor, the wonderful Counselor, the Spirit of Truth, the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is the best gift that you can ever be given. Come on. In Luke 11, verse 12, the Bible says, you know, as, as, as fathers, we know how to give good gifts to our children. And yeah. you're evil. That's what it says. Because oh, yeah. you're wicked, but you still know how to give good gifts yeah. to your children. Come on. Yeah. How much more will your Heavenly right. Father give right. you the gifts of the Holy yeah. Spirit? Right. It's true. And it's so true. Like, I'm an imperfect father, but I... I want to give good gifts to right. my children. Preach, bro. Now, my wife does most of the shopping. Happy <laughs> <laughs> most, but, but we're one, you know. We, we are one. But this one story I'll share with you. So last year, last year, so we just moved here from Colorado a few months ago. And last year, um, I, I took my son Dylan on a hunting trip. He's, there it is. he's uh, you know, he's getting of the age where he really wants to be a dad. Wants to go out in the woods and hunt. So we, you know, in Colorado, you, it, it's uh, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty rough terrain. So we drove about three hours, parked the car at the edge of a lake, and then we had to hike in about three miles into the wilderness. And we're talking, this is about eleven thousand feet. Okay, it's it's hard just to. I mean, it, it's difficult just to walk across the parking lot oh, yeah. at 11,000 feet, let alone three miles at an incline up in the mountains, okay? With, with a 100-pound backpack on. Come on, man. Deal, okay? And so we go up there, and I'm not sure how Dylan's going to do. I got my backpack. He's got about a 50-pound backpack. And he's got a knife strapped to the side. He's got all the gear. And he's excited. He, he like, were you 10 or 11? I, I, I guess probably 11 at the time. But he's excited to go up there. I'm like, I don't know how he's going to do. <laughs> I might have to carry him. I can't carry you. I told him from the beginning, I'm not going to be able to carry you. Okay? <laughs> you're going to have to, to persevere. Wow. He's like, Dad, I'm okay. I got this. Nice. He was such a trooper. He hiked the entire three miles. Come on. And then we would hike about five or six miles, seven miles a day, just hunting the Colorado wilderness. And it's not like walking through a meadow. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> this was rough, steep inclines, mud, dirt, rock, windfall. I mean, I mean, you when you would get done at the end of the day, you just wanted to sleep. You didn't carry your sleep on rocks in a tent. You just... You fell asleep quick because you were so tired. And then we were living off the land. We'd catch our fish every night and eat those. It was nice. really cool. Yeah, there it is. But he did, the whole three days we were up there, he was a trooper. And he hiked up, he hiked out. He did so good. He didn't complain one time. And after that trip, after that trip, I was so proud of him. He'd been asking for a, 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 a night. It's called a kukri. They're made in like Nepal. They're made in India. It's, a, it's kind of a cross between a, a Bowie knife and a and a machete or something. A really cool knife. That's what they wanted. Okay. I was so proud of them. I got online. I found the kukri knife. You know, I ordered. I had it shipped to the house. I got this knife, and then I wrote up a really special thing, just how proud I was of, of my son. All right. And I, I was so proud. I, I wanted to find that special knife, the special gift, just to communicate how proud I was. Of him, oh, come on, bro. And I and, then, and I take pictures. I print out the pictures. I I do this whole collage, and I Let's go. I put the little note in the knife. I lay it on his bed. I told him to go in his room, look for something, and he sees his knife. You know awesome. that he's been asking for. Oh, come on, and, and he reads it, and and it was just I was gotta watch. I was see, <laughs> and I watched the elation in his eye. He was just so excited, like. Yeah, I got my knife. You know, he's trying it out. But me, I'm like crying. All right? Because I put so much into this gift. Come on, bro. And he received it in such a great way. That's awesome. That, and that's just an example. I'm an imperfect, sinful dad. Yep. And I want to give him a great gift. Oh, God, in an even so much greater way, Woo. wants to give us the best gift ever. Yeah. The gift of the Holy Spirit. It's his presence with us. 
Always. How do you get the gift from Acts chapter 2? Come on, bro. How do you get the gift? See, the gift is offered to us all, but you got to open it. Let this not be the gift that just sits there unwrapped. Okay. Unopened. Come on, bro. Let's go, bro. In Acts chapter 2. Come on, bro. Me. Acts chapter 2 is an amazing passage of Scripture because it really details the beginning of the church, how people became Christians. This is, this is right after Jesus died on the cross. Actually, it's seven weeks after Jesus died on the cross. The church is being started. God ushers in the church. He ushers in the kingdom at Pentecost. Mm-hmm. Because that's when he gave them the old law as well, just so you know. Oh, wow. he, gave them, he gave them the Ten Commandments on Pentecost. The, Pentecost is the celebration of the giving of the Ten Commandments. Come on, just bro. so you know, a little side note there. Oh, wow. So when it. does God usher in? That was the first covenant. When does he usher in the second covenant at Pentecost? That's why he told them to wait for seven days. Right. Mm-hmm. God is a God of order. Yeah. Yeah. So here at Pentecost, you know, Peter stands up. He preaches to the people on, on what it means to that, the fact that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and what should your response be to that? Mm. And he finishes the sermon in Acts chapter 2 and verse 36. He says, Therefore let all of Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified. You have to understand that none of these guys were the actual men, men that crucified Jesus. They weren't there. They weren't the ones that were nailing the nails. They weren't the Romans. They had just come in for Pentecost, the festival. Yeah. I think they're walking around with kebab in one hand, dope milk latte in the other, and like just hanging out, you know, enjoying themselves. And all of a sudden, Peter says, you crucified Jesus Christ on the cross. They're like, hey, I didn't come here for all of that, man. I just, I'm just here for the festival. But he arrests them. He gets, their, he gets their attention. He says, God has made this Jesus whom you crucified. Yeah, right. Both the Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? It's the age-old question. What do I need to do to get right with God? Just tell me what I need to do. I'm cutting my heart. I, I just need to get right with God. Yep. Come on, bro. Peter replied, you have to understand, Peter could tell them anything at this point. And here's what Peter tells them. It's the same message for us today. Here's what you need to do. Come on. Peter replied, Repent. Yes. And be baptized. Come yeah. on. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. Come on. And then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Come on. This promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off yeah. and for all whom the Lord our God will call. Come on. With many other words. He warned them, and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Come on. Come on, Jeremiah. This is awesome. That's amazing, bro. It's such an amazing story. And, and, and it says they're given the greatest gift there, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it's the gift that keeps on giving, too. Yeah. You go back and study it out, but Ephesians 5... Verse 22 says the gifts of the Holy Spirit are love, joy, peace. You know, we have all these these things at Christmas time, all these slogans that you see. Love, joy, and peace, and happiness, and, you know, joy to the world, and all these things. You can only truly get those things through the fruits of the Spirit. Come on, bro. bro. Satan says you can get them through Galatians 5.19, the action of the simple nature. Yeah. Yeah. Satan promises that if you're sexually immoral, if you're impure, then you're going to find that true love. Right. That's a lie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't get the fruit of the Spirit through the acts of the sinful nature. Yeah. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Yeah. The presence of God. Make sure this holidays you are focused on walking by the Spirit. Living by the Spirit. Come on. Being in the presence of God. My last point, and the quickest one, your presence. Come on, bro. Let's go. Wherever you are, be all there. <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on. Wherever you are, be all there. You know, it's so easy to be distracted. It's so easy to be with people but not be with people. Yeah. yeah. I saw this commercial. It's good for me, bro. 
Thank you. And uh, <laughs> I'm preaching to myself, by the way. <laughs> and I saw this commercial, and the tagline was "Device Free Dinner." Let's go. And it's funny because you, in this commercial, you see this family sitting around the table. Actually, you don't see the father. You see a mother and her three or four kids, and everybody looks really sad. It's a beautiful dinner. Everybody's sad. And the little girl is looking really down, and the mom goes, well, what's, what's wrong, honey? And she's like, I miss daddy. And another kid's like, I miss daddy, too. We're so sad we miss daddy. And it's like really sad. And then all of a sudden it pans out, and Will Ferrell is sitting there. He's the dad. <laughs> and he's holding, it, he's holding his phone. Like, oh, we just miss daddy. And it pans out, and he's like, oh, check out this filter. I look like a cat. And he's holding into oh his phone. And he's sitting there with his family, but distracted. And everyone's like, I miss daddy. But it's so true of what's yeah. happening today. Come on. Yeah, come on. I mean, you, you can be in a room full of people and everybody's on their phone. Yeah. Everybody's distracted. Nobody's with each other. Yeah. So the challenge for the holidays is, is wherever you are, be there. Yeah. Be present. Come on. Be present. You know, I, I saw this other video of a, of a woman on her phone and she's so distracted by her phone, she's walking and she's doing the phone thing, and she walks into a fountain in the middle of the city, and she falls into the water. I saw another one where somebody is driving, and and they're watching their GPS, and they're trying to drive by following the streets on the GPS, and they're so distracted, they're so distracted, they drive into a pond. But this is our life. We're so consumed with the media around us, and so consumed with our face and Facebook that we don't have these face-to-face conversations with people. We're such a distracted society. The challenge for us, the challenge for myself, I'm going on a Facebook fast fast. over the holidays. I'm not going to whip it out. I'm not going to get the Facebook out. I'm just going to focus on being present with my family. Being present with my wife. Being present with the kids. I challenge you guys to do the same. Wherever you are, be present. How do you do that? 1 Thessalonians 2.8 says, We loved you so much that we not only shared the gospel with you, but we shared our lives with you as well. Mm. Cherish people. Cherish the moments that you have with people over the holidays. Get your face out of Facebook. Yeah. Talk to people instead of text. <laughs> Connect with people yeah. instead of connecting Come on. online. Yeah. Come on, bro. Connect with people. If you're depressed, you're living in the past. If you're anxious, you're living in the future. Mm-hmm. And if you're at peace, you're living in the present. Wow. Let's finish in Matthew 28. Come on, brother. Our final passage. Come on, bro. This is good, bro. God's presence and your presence. That's all you need for the holidays. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Our final passage, Matthew 28. Good. Matthew 28, verse 18. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Then Jesus came to them and said, these are Jesus' last words to his disciples. This is, this is right before he leaves them forever. His final words. He says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Mm baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you all to the very end of the age. He says, his final words are, go make disciples. Go teach others to be what I've taught you to be. Go teach others how to have this relationship with me. Go make disciples. Teach others to obey. Go connect people with their maker. This is your purpose. This is your mission. And he says, if you do this, if you make disciples, if you teach one another to obey, if you connect with me and connect with each other, I will be with you. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Always. Come on. His presence will always be with us to the very end of the age. Mm. I wish you happy holidays. I wish you a Merry Christmas, but let's not focus on the Christmas presents under the tree.
But let's focus on the true Christmas presence. Right, right. The presence of God. Connecting with God and connecting with people. Amen. Amen.